Good morning and happy fourth advent. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, who chose the Virgin Mary, full of grace, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior, now fill us with your grace, that we in all things may embrace your will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lighting of the Advent Amen. Jesus, as we wait in Adam, dear Jesus, as we, dear Jesus, as we light the candle on this Advent wreath, may the light of your presence bring joy to our heart. Bless our family and our friends, and be with all those who are in need this holiday season. Amen. Amen. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring good news of a great joy which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Dear Jesus, may the light of your love always shine in our hearts. As Christmas draws closer, we marvel at your great love for us. Let your love transform every aspect of our lives and touch everyone we encounter. Our hearts are open to you, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put my Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. 
For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. Thanks be to God. Amen. Song for today comes from Psalm number 80, and I'll read to the asterisk if we could join in together for the second half of the verse. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. Shine forth, and you that are on the In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord, God of hosts. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. And our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. The son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Christ Jesus our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn this morning is 112, Behold the Mountain of the Lord. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but he had no marital relations with her until she had borne him a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I, I have an example that I don't know. I don't know if it's going to go over, but we'll try. Um, <clears throat> I was, uh, I, I, I'd saved up, the very first time I had gone on a holiday that I could afford was about a year after high school, uh, I went on a super budget trip uh, with a couple of friends uh, to the Dominican Republic. Uh, for those of you who haven't been, uh, the Dominican Republic is, is beautiful, uh, but not for those people on a budget uh, trip. And I was there five days and I discovered something. It's, it was a beautiful place, the people were super nice, and I can only spend two days at the beach before I get shockingly bored. Um, but the, the reason I'm bringing this trip up was uh, one of the people that I, I, I went with, uh, uh, and, I'm sorry, Sherry, was, was a girlfriend of mine from, from high school. <laughs> Sherry right now is going, we've never been to the Dominican Republic. <laughs> um, and, and the very first day we were there, she informed me that she no longer wanted to be my girlfriend uh, on the first day of a five-day trip. And I... The reason she did that was, of course, she didn't want me to cancel out on my part of the trip before, before we had left, right? So needless to say, that didn't, that didn't go well, um, and then we got home. Now, the reason I bring this up is that about 15, 17 years l later, yeah, no, 12, I don't know, it doesn't matter, very, very early 2000s, around 2000, 2001, I'm walking through the Reno Center, and I run into her. And she comes barreling up to me, and she's like, I'm married now. That's the first thing out of her mouth. <laughs> I'm married now. I have three kids. I'm like, great. Nice to see you. <laughs> Kept walking. I, and I kind of found out through mutual friends, she hated me. <laughs> I didn't break up with her in the Dominican Republic. Um, and she, you know, and didn't think I was a very nice person. Um, now, here's the thing. The reason I bring all of this up is this. And, and you've had, not that experience, but experiences of the, of the kind that I'm about to explain to you. There are people out there who dislike you, no matter what you do or say, right? And despite what you've done and said, they just don't like you. Um, and you don't know why. And we have different views of ourselves. Have you ever, you look, uh, you look in the mirror when you get up in the morning, right? And I hope you, you think, hey, I'm, I'm looking pretty good. It's not bad, you know? It could be worse. Um, and then somebody takes a photograph of you and you're like, oh. What's going on with the photography today? It doesn't look anything like the person I see in the mirror in the bathroom when I get up. That person's much uglier than the person I see 
in the bathroom mirror. We, there's different realities we live in simultaneously, isn't there? There's the person that we think we are. There's the person that we want to be. And usually we say to ourselves, all things being equal, if I had all the shots that my friends did, I'd be this person here. And then there's the person that others see you as. And all of these things, which one's right? They're all right from different perspectives. They're all right in a way. Because i, I got to tell you, your view of yourself is not 100% accurate. And thank God your spouse's view of you is not 100% accurate. <laughs> People who don't like you aren't 100% accurate. But they all come together to form what we see of the world and ourselves in the world. Now the reason I'm bringing all that up is I want to talk about someone who hardly ever gets any play. Joseph. Mary's husband. Mary, rightfully so, gets much more attention than so. So she should. I mean, let's be frank. But Joseph appears only around Advent to Christmas. Then we hear nothing of Joseph after Epiphany. The guys kind of go, i got to put in a good word for Joseph. I like Joseph, and I'll tell you why. This um, betrothal in, the, in, in uh, Old and New Testament times, in the ancient world, was different than today, right? T today, uh, engagements are treated more like what I would call going out in high school, where whatever happens, happens, we're not married yet. Um, I think it was a bit stronger in the past, but in ancient times, the contract to be married is done. If you were betrothed, if you were engaged to somebody as Joseph and Mary were, you're as good as married. You say, well, why, why not just get married? The engagement time, the betrothal time, was the time of preparation for the bride to, to finish off all of her affairs within her family and to decide what she's bringing with her to her new home. And it was the groom's time to prepare that home to be ready to support his new wife, ancient times. So they were as good as married back then. Joseph finds out Mary's already going to have a child. Normally... This was as good as death for the wife, or the fiancé. And Joseph, being a good guy, who could come back pretty strong, rightfully so, pretty strong at her, but Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. He's like, okay, well, we're done, but I don't want to hurt you. So we'll just do this quietly and take care of it and, you know, God bless you and take care. But then in a dream, he's told, this is going to be the savior of the world. She has conceived by the Holy Spirit. And, and Joseph is such a righteous man. He believes that. I got to tell you, if I was in a similar set of circumstances, it would have to be a pretty vivid dream. <laughs> but Joseph, his heart was open. He had a heart for God. He was faithful. And so he saw the angel coming to him for what it was, a message directly from God. Angelos, where we get the word angel from. It means exactly messenger. This is the savior of the world that your wife is carrying, conceived by the Holy Spirit of God. Get married. And he does. And he provides for her. He takes care of her. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, had no marital relations with her until she had born a son and named him Jesus. So <laughs> follow everything. The faith that's required to do what God is asking us to do even when we are 100% sure that we are doing what God wants us to do, you still need tremendous faith because sometimes that thing goes entirely against everything that you know and believe in this world. Faithfulness 
by its very nature, requires you to step out when you don't know. And to trust that the next step you take in blindness, there's going to be a floor underneath you or a landing for you. That there's not a pit waiting when you take a step out. And if you say, well, I have to absolutely 100% be sure that I'm stepping into a safe place, that's not faith. Faith requires that amount of trust to go forward. Why did I bring up all of my story at the beginning? We are in our lives by turn the hero and the villain of our story and other people's stories. We'd like to think we're the hero 100% of the time. You know who thinks that? Psychopaths think that. <laughs> Sociopaths think that. I'm the hero all the time. The rest of us know. You know you're not. The, the best example in the Bible I can think of is, the, is, is the, the, the night that Jesus is betrayed all the way up to his crucifixion. Every character is there. The best friends who deny him because they might get in trouble too. The Roman soldiers really don't care and just follow orders. The Sadducees and the Pharisees and the chief priests who are right behind that. Pilate who just doesn't have, he knows Jesus isn't guilty. But he doesn't have the courage to say, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not ordering that. I'm not doing that. And then the people along the road. Some of them crying their eyes out for Jesus. Other ones berating him as he's walking down. Berated also was he when he was hung on the cross beside one of the, the two thieves. One of them saying, well, if you're a savior, save yourself and us. And if you're not, just shut up. I'm dying. And the other one says, can I be with you in paradise? Jesus says, yes, you will be. All the characters are there. And in our lives, we have to accept the fact that we're sometimes going to be the people by the side of the road who want to help them carry the cross and are crying our eyes out and the ones who stand back indifferent. Sometimes we're the person with courage who steps forward no matter what, no matter what the consequences. And other times we're like Pilate and we hang back thinking, eh, or Peter, <clears throat> I, I don't know him. Uh, I've never met him before. Three times, not once, not twice, three times. Don't know him, don't know him. <laughs> Best friend. The rock upon which he was going to build his church. Don't know him. We've done that. All of us. We've done that. Tell me you haven't let yourself down. The point of this is know yourself. And know who you're not. You are not God. But the spiritual fight, in a way, is our fight. Of course it is. But in a way, it is not. <coughs> If we step forward in faith, we're not the ones who have to create that safe space we're stepping into blindly. God's already done it. The heavy lifting in everything we do in our spiritual lives lies on the shoulders of Jesus Christ, our Savior. All of that heavy lifting, all we need to do is accept that for ourselves. But what it requires is the moral fortitude and the strength of will to go forward in faith. Sometimes that's easy. Sometimes it's very difficult, like Joseph. But if we do it, the rewards come. This life is a difficult one. But with Jesus doing all that heavy lifting for us through it, we can absolutely handle anything that comes our way. If we turn, though, and rely only on our own courage and our own fortitude, holy cow, those things evaporate at 3 o'clock in the morning when you haven't slept when you're hungry, and when you're scared. Then talk about courage. Patton, sorry, I forgot. Anyway, I have to bring up General Patton in every single sermon. Um, <laughs> he called it three o'clock courage. You can talk about being courageous when you're well-fed, sitting at a table with a bunch of other guys smoking cigars and talking about how brave you are. Talk about it when you're alone, you're scared, you're in the dark, you haven't eaten, you haven't slept, and it's three o'clock in the morning. Then talk about being courageous. We can fail. In the Christmas Carol, when, when Scrooge sees the ghosts and he's desperate not, not to believe, right? What, what does he say? You could be a piece of undercooked potato. In other words, my stomach could be hurting, I could be sleeping, and I could be having this nightmare. But it's true, that's how frail we are. 
But we are going to celebrate this coming week the Savior who does all of the spiritual work for us if we but do accept. And by turns, as I said, we need to be Joseph in faith. We also need to be Mary in that we carry the Holy Spirit, literally in her case, but in us, spiritually within us, so that that can empower us and grow us into the creatures that God wants us to be. Amen.
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom, from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free, and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come soon. O key of David, and scepter of the house of Israel, you open, and none can shut. You shut, and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Jesus, come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal, and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, come soon. This week we pray for members of our parish family. Bob and Susan Lawrence. Rob, William, and Eric Holmes, and Mandy, Gillette Holmes, Linda, Lorraine, Phyllis, Lumsden, Ephraim, and Cooney. For those who need healing, Rita, Rita Diana, Judy, Doreen, Gloria, Sarah, and Lauren. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and he is infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you all. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Gracious God, by the power of the Spirit who sanctified the mother of your Son, make holy all we offer you this day. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the fullness of time came among us in our flesh and opened to us the way of salvation. And now we watch for the day when he will come again in power and great triumph to judge this world, that we, without shame or fear, may rejoice to behold his appearing. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Faithful God, in this sacrament we receive the promise of salvation. May we, like the Virgin Mary, be obedient to your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, whose power are working in us and do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. As you go forth into the world today, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may they see Christ's face in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm Stephen Willis, just for those of you who are perhaps not here every week. I'm one of the church wardens. Uh, so I've got a few notices. Uh, obviously, a uh, very very busy time of year. Uh, so the Christmas Eve services uh, will be 4.30pm uh, on Christmas Eve, that's the family service, and then at 8pm there's the regular Christmas Eve service. On Christmas Day, it's next Sunday, I can't believe that's just a week away, uh, the service will be at 10.30am for this week only. Um, so uh, just make a note, uh, 10.30. Uh, Christmas flowers, again it's not too late to submit a donation for Christmas flowers. Um, you've got till Tuesday, December 20th. Uh, the envelopes are in the narthex at the back of the church. And you can get those to Arlene, so you can either return it to the office or place it on the collection plate. The online bake sale, uh, people came in yesterday, I understand, to pick up their yummy bake goods. Um, if you didn't, they're available downstairs after this service. Uh, while you're down there, there is coffee being served as well. Um, I will just add a note, apparently a gentleman came yesterday to pick up bake goods in the council room and whilst taking his gloves off, lost his wedding band. And uh, in spite of the searching, it couldn't be found. So, if anyone should come across that in there, please hand it into the office or uh, perhaps into Lee's office or to the wardens. Uh, he was obviously very upset. Um, the name tag board, uh, that's still being worked on. I'm sure that Carolyn's looking forward to doing that in the new year. <laughs> Uh, the giving envelopes, if you haven't picked those up again, there's a table in the narthex uh, where you can pick up your, uh, your boxes. And it's that time of year again, uh, vestry reports, so if you're head of a committee here at St Thomas, uh, please note that the end of year reports are due and should be submitted by January the 19th so that the final report can be compiled for the vestry meeting. A note from Canada Post, uh, they say when sending mail to the office here, please add the PO Box number, which is PO Box 1064. Uh, just a couple of other things, Brian, who works very hard as our treasurer, sent out an update by email um, as we approach the end of the year. And, uh, I think in spite of everything, we, we're, uh, we're still in pretty good shape. 
uh, although we still have a deficit projected of about $10,000. Um, so really the, the basis is um, that there, is, there are envelopes at the back of the office for Christmas offerings, so if anybody's planning any additional donations, please pick up an envelope at the back of the church. And uh, by the magic of accounting, the year end will be due January the 8th, so we can count in any of these donations up until January the 8th. Uh, so please, please think about that. Lastly, and I see a few of the characters here, it is our uh, pageant, Chimes in the Night, which is at 11 o'clock this morning. And I do hope you can stay and join in with this. I'm sure it'll be great fun. I know a lot of hard work's gone into this, and there'll be some great music. And uh, please stay around after coffee and start at 11. So with that, I wish you all a Merry Christmas for next weekend. And uh, have a good week. Thank you.